Well, thank you very much, Charles, for that very generous introduction. In one of the books he mentioned, I speculated that in an age of secular dogmatism, churches might become sanctuaries of doubt. And uh, I think this conversation that are being held here suggests that that wasn't entirely um, wild speculation. Um, but in the spirit of what Giles uh, uh, said about the type of, con of conversations that are being held here, I don't want to um, persuade anyone here of, any of anything or uh, persuade them from holding anything that they hold or any idea they have altogether, but rather just to s suggest a few thoughts, three in particular, about the ways in which um, the categories of thinking we inherit from Christian monotheism shape uh, um, secular thinking and um, make it more brittle and dogmatic and I would say also more shallow in many ways than the traditions it um, draws upon. And in fact, I'll argue that what people talk about secular when people talk about secular thinking or secular humanism or any of these kind of arguments, secularity as a more abstract notion is in fact a wholly post-Christian way of thinking um, that unless there'd been Christianity, unless there'd been um, uh, Christian monotheism, one couldn't really even talk in these terms at all. Um, the notion of secularity means nothing in, uh, it seems to me, in. Um, the Greece of polytheism and Plato and Socrates. It doesn't mean anything much really outside monotheism itself. And in fact, that raises the question, which I'll also talk a bit about, what religion is um, at all. Because there is a, a view which says that there's no such thing as religion. That religion is just a sort of variety of different social practices and um, human engagements with, uh, with, with nothing um, at the heart of them. And I think that's a sort of slightly hyperbolical uh, way of saying something which is true, which is that religion is extremely diverse. The best book ever written, at least by a philosopher on religion, is one that's still in print, William James's Varieties of Religious Experience, an absolutely perfectly wonderful book, and not only because most philosophers are obsessionally secular in their thinking and <laughs> theologically illiterate to the last degree. That's not the only reason. It's an inherent, it's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful book. I strongly recommend you to read it.